So um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this edition of uh, uh, DPF event, <clears throat> which is uh, focused on Hindi imposition. So <clears throat> the initial Pandora box was opened by the uh, Honorable Home Minister when he spoke in April, when he said uh, Hindi should be the uh, link language for this country and the working of uh, the union government uh, ministry should be in uh, Hindi and as recent as uh, a few weeks back, the same home minister uh, mentioned that uh, the, uh, there are efforts going on to, <clears throat> uh, to impose Hindi as a working language in Indian uh, high commissions abroad. And uh, day before yesterday, uh, the Honorable Finance Minister of India, Nirmala Sitharamanji, has said uh, uh, that uh, in Tamil Nadu, Hindi should be, Hindi students who study Hindi should be given scholarships. And also we had this Hindi Diva. So there's been attempt by uh, many BJP leaders to impose Hindi. And by celebrating uh, events like Hindi Divas, they have tried to uh, show that Hindi is uh, superior in comparison to other uh, regional languages such as Tamil, Bengal, uh, Kannada or Oriya. For example, if you look at the amount of money that's been recently spent for Hindi or Sanskrit, it's 22 times more than what it is uh, spent for uh, Tamil or uh, Bengali or Oriya put together. And also uh, another anecdotal evidence is uh, the classical Tamil Institute, the funding has been uh, continuously reduced over the last few years under this government. And most Kendri Vidyalaya schools in Tamil Nadu do not have uh, teachers to teach Tamil. I think that's the case with Bengal or in uh, Orissa or in uh, or in Kerala or in Karnataka. So this initially people thought it's only in Tamil Nadu we have a problem with uh, Hindi, but now as you see, many other states have joined us starting from West Bengal to Orissa, to Karnataka, to, uh, to Kerala, Maharashtra. And this is clearly because the regional identity of uh, these states are being threatened under this, uh, uh, under this government, which believes that there should be one language one religion and one culture, which is uh, antithesis to the concept of the country as such. India is a, is a country where unity and diversity is what that defines us. And even if you go and look at the European Union, many, can, for example, if you have to com compare Norway and uh, which is the most developed uh, country which has very high per capita GDP with, for example, Bulgaria, which, is, which has the lowest per capita GDP and least uh, human resource development in Europe, but that difference between these two country, countries is itself not as profound as, for example, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Bihar or West Bengal and uh, some other province. It's not just the socioeconomic development that are diverse, but even the cultural, even the, even the languages are, uh, are different. So trying to impose one culture, one language is uh, completely uh, alien to the concept of this country. And as a great leader of uh, DMKC and Anodre said, why do you need big door for a big dog and a small door for a small dog? If English can be used as a linked language for across the country, then why do you need the Hindi? For example, working language of uh, white collar jobs, be it in Bengal, be it in Gurgaon, be it in um, Bombay, be it Pune, be it uh, Bangalore or from uh, Chennai, it's English. So then why, so if you want to provide your uh, youth with better jobs, then the language has to be English. So why is that people in Tamil Nadu or Bengal have to learn uh, Bengali, Hindi and English and people in, uh, let's say, UP and Bihar or uh, elsewhere would learn just uh, Hindi, which is their mother tongue. I think this is unfair. With this, I would like to uh, open, the, uh, pa open the panel. So we have uh, Satkara Satpati, uh, who's a former four-time uh, Lok Sabha MP and uh, also Rajya Sabha MP. Currently, he's an editor of a leading um, Orissa-based uh, uh, newspaper and magazine. And uh, next, we have a uh, good friend, Garga Chatterjee, who runs his organization, Bangla Poko, and has been written extensively on uh, Hindi imposition in different uh, news media. And then finally, we have uh, Kavita Murlidhan, who's also an independent journalist and who writes for uh, the Wire, the News Minute, the Hindu, etc. Uh, with this, I would request the, uh, the Honorable uh, MP uh, to start. <clears throat> so I can un unmute yourself, sir.
So, can you hear me? So, you have to unmute, unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. So I can hear, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, thank you, Thiru. Uh, I think you said Thiru, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Thiru, yeah. Thiru, uh, for uh, involving me, for inviting me to be a participant uh, in this uh, 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 this conference today. Uh, this has been, a, you see, but let's not put the blame just on the BJP. The problem of Hindu, of Hindi, has started with the Congress itself. The uh, parliament always had this uh, language committee, which uh, the Congress had set up. And uh, if you go to central government offices, they have one word per day. And that is a Hindi word. So from uh, a very young age, I used to resent that because I used to think because my Hindi was bad and I'm not proud to say that because my Hindi was bad and uh, I never really liked the language very much. Uh, I'm not anti-Hindi at all. Uh, please be very clear of that. I'm not anti any language. All languages are worthy. All languages are good. All languages... One should learn as many languages as possible. But um, personally, my Hindi has been very bad. So I always used to think that how, why should I have to learn three languages, that is uh, uh, English, Uriya, and Hindi, whereas somebody who knows, who, whose mother tongue is Hindi, has to learn only one uh, extra language, English. So I always used to think that everybody should have equal amount of disadvantages and uh, then only you can judge a uh, student's abilities. So if uh, kids in Bengal or Tamil Nadu or uh, Odisha have to learn uh, uh, three languages, a similar student in the same uh, class, say in class sixth or seventh or eighth in Bihar or uh, in Uttar Pradesh or in uh, uh, Haryana, would not have to learn uh, three languages. So they, if, uh, if the government made it in such a way that all kids in uh, Uttar Pradesh have to learn Tamil, Hindi, and uh, English, all kids in Bihar would have to learn Bengali, Hindi, English, all kids in Madhya Pradesh would learn Odia, Hindi, English, then I think there would be a parity and one should welcome that. If that is not the situation and if a kid can pass uh, without learning three languages, why should a kid in another state be forced to learn three languages? This is one issue that I had when I was very young. Otherwise, it is not Hindi per se that I'm opposed to. What uh, bothers me is if you are pressurizing me on one subject such as a language, then tomorrow you will pressurize me on something else that will become the religion, the dress code. We already see signs of that happening. So therefore, it is very essential that uh, at the very outset, uh, there is an, uh, uh, an, I wouldn't say opposition, but there is a contra opinion which needs to be aired that this is not how a country can be unified. It's fine, all of us for ages together, we have learned that we have been hearing that uh, uh, that India is uh, unity in diversity. But the other point is India uh, never really was one country. Till the British put us together, the Northeast never belonged to India, the Mughals never ruled there. The uh, Afghans before that, Shesha Suri stopped short of uh, further conquest in somewhere in Bangladesh, in present day Bangladesh. So he went up to Bengal. And if you see uh, history backwards, many parts of India were not together as we see it today. So the 1947 India is not the India of, of historical times. 
in that situation we should tolerate that let every language flourish and governments have a responsibility to ensure that there is parity equality and equal opportunities offered to every child who is born on this soil therefore i think it is improper to uh, force any language uh, and uh, you know in the constituent assemblies some people had said that let sanskrit be the language now that also i have reservations why would i want to learn sanskrit if it is not a live language if i cannot uh, teach my child say science or uh, even if he wants to study arts if i cannot teach him in sanskrit if i do not have the ability then why would i compel somebody else's child to learn sanskrit so i personally believe that people should be encouraged to learn as many languages as they like but there should be no force on anybody on no child or no grown up to learn any one particular language that is mota uh, modi that is my main issue thank you thank you thank you for your time and uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful uh, comment